what can you do now to make next summer better, survivable, palatable? What are we making next summer? That's what we're going to discuss today. Hello, Camp Pros, and welcome to the Camp Hacker Podcast. This is episode 154. Um, my name is Joe Richards. I'm the executive director here at Pierce Williams Summer Camp and Retreat Facility, part of the United Church Camping Network, and I'm joined by uh, our co-host today. So, Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Hudson. I'm a social worker and one of the directors at Camp Highlight, a camp for children from LGBTQ plus families. And my name is Gabrielle Rail. I'm one of the directors at Camp Waro, which is an all-girls camp in the Laurentian Mountains, and we focus on creating a positive environment for gender minorities. Hello, folks. How are we doing today? Good. So good. So, so good. good. So that is good. awesome. Hey, to our <laughs> listeners, I want to remind you that iTunes reviews are very important because it knocks us up in the list, and we would love it if you went to ratethispodcast.com slash camp and then clicked on the ratings and review buttons. It would really help out Camp Hacker um, and any camp podcasts you listen to. And now a message from our sponsor, Ultra Camp. Ever feel like you're spending so much time at the office that you'd have no time left for camp? With Ultra Camp, you can track attendance, manage staff applications, and streamline registration so you'll be back outside in no time. Find out more at ultracampmanagement.com slash camp hacker. That is ultracampmanagement.com slash camp hacker. Excellent. Here we are for the episode. How, what can we do now to make camp better? This is the summer 2022 seems really far away right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not because we need to get, we need to get this stuff together not and go with it. So what, uh, what, are some, what are some quick things we can do to make sure next summer is ready to rock? Take time you, off. You said quick <laughs> things? <laughs> well, there's going to be quick things and there's going to be long things. It's all in breaking down. It's the idea of um, the Anne Lamott book, right? Bird by bird. There's a there's number of things we need to work through. We can't do them all at once. Some of them will take longer. Um, quick suggestions of long things you also have to do. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm saying take time off. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a, I know it's busy. I know we're, we're, we're going to blink and camp is going to be around the summer. Uh, summer will be around the corner. Um, you need, you need to be fresh. You need to be thinking clearly. Uh, you need to take some time off, take time off, uh, especially camp directors, especially camp pros, especially people that think of themselves as, you know, can, go to bed late, get up early. I'm one of those people. Um, take time off that that's where it, you got to start there. I think the key Gab that I would add to that take time off is mm. also learn how not to be a martyr, right? Like, and this is mm. the, this is the, the thing I've, I've said time and time again, is that camp directors tend to believe that they have to go 24 seven all summer long. And I don't think that's in the best interest of anybody um, learn, learn where your energy is, but taking time off is hugely important to your own self-preservation. Mm -hmm. Um, and that extends right into the summer, right? Forcing yourself to take days off actually during camp. What mm. will camp survive without you there? Yes. It's an open question. Is it, is that clear? Is it clear that no, I <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> I, definitely taking time off. Um, during camp, but that's not our question. Like, what can you do now is really, I would suggest take some time off and near the end of that, really sit down and set your goals and intentions. Even if you've been doing mm -hmm. this for 25 years or your camp's been around for a hundred years, mm -hmm. the world is different now. And perhaps that's always true, but specifically in the last two to five years, uh, depending on who you are and where you are, there has been a lot of trauma that's going on uh, that has gone on and our camps have been affected, our staff and our families and our campers have been affected. And I, I know for my part, I have been looking at the things that we do at camp um, from just from things like the schedule, which are always up for review, but just sort of like, well, why do we do things this way? Like, does this still make sense given 
how the world is, sure, but also who my campers are now. This past summer, um, God, I always feel like I come on here and tell stories, but about like <laughs> stories I'm pretty sure to tell about my kids and my staff, but like, <laughs> no, the kids were wild this summer. <laughs> <laughs> they were wild. And yeah. <laughs> We had issues and problems, not only that we've never seen before, but that we didn't even think would come up. Yeah. But this is what happens when kids haven't been socialized for 18 months. The young ones had, you know, maybe seen first grade and then never went back to school. And then yeah. the next group situation they have is me. So, you know, I've been looking at the program a lot, like, well, why do we do this? Why does this make sense? Mm. Is this enough time for people to sort of like decompress? Um, you know, so I would just, I would suggest that just to look at your program and see, just check it as if you were creating the whole thing today. Does it still make sense for who kids are right now? I found, and then I'll wrap up, but I found that like the kids needed a little bit more time to themselves because they've been very used to getting a little bit more time to decompress in between activities. And so the pace of it was seemed really sort of like intense it was exactly the same pace they had in 2019, but it seemed more intense because they are just different kids. So I would suggest that. Look at your program. I think I think that's really important to look at that, but I also think it's really important to look at what comfort people will find from tradition, right? What you've mm. done that you're not going to change that brings that comfort and not just to your campers, but to parents, right? To send their kids back to camp. What you're saying with, uh, with kids who... <laughs> my wife is dealing with this as an elementary school principal. You don't have one junior kindergarten class currently in Ontario. You have two junior kindergarten classes because mm -hmm. they never learned to socialize as a junior kindergarten last year. And so you have kindergarten kids who are struggling with, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like learning how to live in community and be in community during the day. And I think um, one of the things is how can we offer that comfort of home to parents while still understanding the moment has changed from, you know, from August of 2019. August of 2019 to July for us in Ontario of 2022 is a long time, yeah, right? Is not, it's 34 months of change has happened since the last time kids would have been at camp for me here at Pierce Williams. And it is, it is a challenge, but I, I, I want to be really intentional about what are the comfort things. And we talked about that a lot with our staff this past summer, right? What are we, what can we just give up and what is the most important things to keep so that campers know and, um, and can feel that love when they come back for for what they do, be it a special I, program or or yeah. something of that nature. I love that, um, Joe. I love the idea. I hadn't thought of comfort necessarily, and I think sometimes that's because when there is change and when there is difficulty, you know, sometimes it's about building up your defenses? How do you make your team as strong as possible? How do you create that trust? How do you, you know, all of that. And I would love to have just this open forum with, um, with my staff, my returning staff and ask them what brings them comfort at camp so that they can actually reconnect to comfort. And what a beautiful way of of just hearing your staff and, and building those connections, but also doing the same thing with potential campers and family members, what brings them. And then of course that goes right into marketing. Uh, we all know when we reach out to our families and ask their opinion, that's marketing. Um, reaching out to your staff is staff training, but comfort is, that's just a non-threatening way of perhaps approaching uh, part of the prep that we need to do for next summer. And I think especially one of the things that, that has happened here at Pierce Williams just before the pandemic was this, this idea of home, right? That camp is home um, and a home away from home for so many people. And I think that what, what draws us back to, uh, some of us don't have a home to go home to, right? Like once you become a of a certain age, right, that your home is different and you know, the place where you grew up might no longer exist, but camp to a lot of these people is 
to the to the staff, to the campers, and to the parents, right? A place that is safe. And I think that that's, I think that it's uh, it's funny because we don't in getting ready for the summer 2022, as with every summer prior to this, I will make changes that I never communicate to the parents, or the staff, or the campers. Right. Like we'll make changes okay. and people say, well, how are you going to tell parents you've changed that? And I was like, I'm, I'm not. We're just mm-hmm. going to we're just going to do it um, because I've trusted my gut and you're in the same. Right. And it's nothing dramatic. And, and so, you know, flying a pride flag at camp shouldn't take, you know, somebody's issue. Somebody could take issue with that. Totally fine for them. Do I care? Nope. <laughs> Right, like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> love that energy. Uh, <laughs> That's a I, I love, energy. Truly. I love the point that you're bringing, though. Is sort of like, I, I love this concept. It feels like we're moving into like its own topic, but like they're mm. visiting, like they're revisiting and producing the idea of home for our staff and family and campers, um, and trying to create a constant in a world that has been a little chaotic. I love that idea. Um, and also the, the fact that you bring up communication, Joe, I think is really interesting to me because I think about how many times we change things at camp and we actually don't let the parents know, like camp for better or for worse has been a little opaque for parents. They know what we tell them, should there be a challenge or a crisis? They know what the kids report home, which is usually, you know, we didn't do anything, you know, (laughs) kids are, uh, but I, it's something I've been thinking about going into next year is that the parents who've had their own issues with disconnection and feeling like feeling like a comfortable place. I just mm-hmm. wonder if as part of our whole camp community thing, if we can't bring them in more through better communication about how and why we do the things that we do. I don't want to get too far off topic, which is like, what do we do need to do to be more successful? I'm but I think this is on here, topic, so. Chris, right? Yeah. Like we're, we're talking about, yeah things to make camp better you and and i know gab and and chris i'm not sure where the majority of your parents come from but like for a small camp like ours where the majority of our campers and parents are within an hour's drive of camp i can actually start this well before the summer and not just communicate with them literally have them on site right hey we've done we've done a ton of improvements with your tax dollars <laughs> through the pandemic. <laughs> and we were talking about it today, like myself and Flash and Brother Bill, we were talking about the fact that there's just stuff that we're so used to at camp now because we've been here for two years, but we're like, oh, we've never gone through a summer with this shelving unit installed in this hallway to be used for shoes or, or kit ba- Like, you're like, well, what else have we not? What are people going to be surprised by is the question I have when they come back. So what else do you think we can do to make, for for me, it's, Mm -hmm. I need to hire a staff member because I'm, I'm down full-time staff. Now I have funding, um, Mm -hmm. but. Just one you're down. That's incredible. No, I'm down two full-time staff. I mean, okay. Out of still, out of four. Oh, (laughs) well, well, there it is. Sorry, (laughs) please continue. (laughs) (laughs) And so I have funding to hire where we're, um, so I think in, in making, you know, for next summer to be a, the most amazing, I need to get my crap together and make, make decisions and start spending money that we have from grants and funds to, to get camp ready. But I'm, I'm, I think that it's, I think a huge part between now and the summer is going to be communicating. I'm wondering about doing a weekly vlog style um, thing versus trying to sit down and type things, but literally walking around camp, maybe introducing campers to the new things that we we've done and shown off. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and especially with, you know, with your organization, not being, you know, run with campers for the past two years, there's such a knowledge gap that, that we're going to experience with our campers, with our families and with our staff members. And that's something I've been thinking about a lot is how do we lessen that knowledge gap. And, and I certainly saw that last summer, we ran for the first time last summer, the summer before that, we did have staff on site and we did take the opportunity to train them in leadership and in programming. And it, I am so grateful that we were able to do such a thing, but there's still a knowledge gap. I even saw it in our seniors that came this year 
Um, traditionally, our seniors really take on a responsibility and an understanding that they are role modeling for for our younger campers. And it really makes the cycle work very, very well. And this year, because we had to be in pods, they didn't have that opportunity to do the role modeling. And we did see some behavioral issues or behavioral opportunities, opportunities for me to talk to them about their behavior. Um, but there is, there is a, there's a gap there. And, and, and how do we fill in that gap? How do we create links? Um, and you know what are what are certain things that our community members are missing, and how can we communicate that? And I, I think vlogging, or if you're, you're somebody that likes to to type, or just have uh, Instagram posts that are a little square, and it's just giving information, but getting people reconnected to what's changed, but also um, some of the values of your organization. That's something I'm really thinking a lot about right now. Is the is that gap? And on the theme of like communication and mm-hmm. home, which I, I feel like we're really circling those topics. If you have the ability, depending on how many kids come to your camp, perhaps like calling to check in on how people are doing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we used to do this when our camp was much, much smaller. Like the moment someone would register, like instead of just pushing it through and sending them an email, we would give them a call and be like, hey, I want to introduce myself. I'm one of the directors. I'd love to hear about your family. I'd love to hear about your kid. Like, what are your hopes? Um, you know, as we got larger, it became, you know, the program got larger and like that kind of thing fell by the wayside. But it's something that we are thinking about, especially because we had to be reintroduced to so many of our kids after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then listening to them <clears throat> around the campfire at night, talk about how their lives are now. It was just, it was a lot of new information. And I mean, so that's something I would recommend. I think you can make your summer better because not only does it give you the raw information that you may need to build a better program or to be more sensitive about X, Y, and Z, but I think it really signals to the parents, like what we were talking about, like, Hey, this is, this is your child's home. And we're just calling a check-in because we are co-parenting and let's let's figure that out together. I, I'd love to hear about what the successes and challenges have been for the camper and your family. And think about how many campers have aged out of your program, right? This is the mm-hmm. thing. So those totally. for us, those campers who would have aged out and become CITs, counselors and training or staff, have we lost them forever, right? Like this is where um, you can revisit our last episode about staffing to talk about staff, but the idea of that aged out component and um, and where are staff from two years ago from 2019 for us at Pierce Williams, right? Where are they now? And are they at all in a mindset where they need to get back to some normalcy? And, and what we experienced last summer when we tried to hire staff and run, the staff weren't running camps was that people, what they were looking for was a normalcy of camp. And when we looked through the guidelines that our province, the province of Ontario had set up for running camps, there was zero normalcy about it, right? Like there would be, our, the way we do our choice-based programming would not have been able to happen, right? You would have had to go to back to cabin programming and pods and all of, and so I, I think our staff, and I think that's the struggle that, um, that my staff certainly would have had this year and, and felt is that it's not, even if they came to camp, it wasn't going to be normal. Um, and, and I think that that's where the best thing we can do, one of the best things we can do to get ready for next summer and to make it most successful is figure out what normal is. Not, as Chris said, not that we have always done it this way, because um, I'm reminded that always is a, is a short memory, right? Always is a, I have staff who, um, you know, staff, as we know, they're, they're limited time at camp, right? Two years, three years. And they're like, well, I've always done it this way. We've, Pierce Williams has always done it this way. And as someone who's been here for 17 years, I'm just like, nope, we started that four years ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, <laughs> if, so, yeah. and if it's I want to so change true. it, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change it because so true. just because your always isn't my always. And I think that's the key. And, and going forward into the summer of 2022, it's figuring out, um, as Chris said, it's a different time than the fall, than, you know, August of 2019. Lots of stuff has changed, but knowing what 
are always that we need to keep and being aware of those things is, is going to help the summer of 2022 be, be more amazing for me. I love your always is not always my always. Um, it's like common sense, your common yeah. sense, common sense is only common to your life experience. Right. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to say think, the, Oh, sorry. sorry. Go, ahead, go, go for it, Chris. I'm, this is really quick. I'm going to say the obvious thing mm. just to get out of the way. What do we need to do to be successful next year? Start earlier. I know. I know you're busy. (laughs) I know, you know, depending on what country you are, Thanksgiving either just happened or it's coming up. You know, Christmas is around the corner. I get it. Like, we're all busy. But like, I'm just going to tell you the same thing your sixth grade teacher told you. If you start this project early, it will be easier on you. So that's... Whether or not I do that is not material listener. I'm just saying, just giving that to you. See? So So you're saying (laughs) let's be less reactive and be a little bit more proactive. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm making a joke of it, but the truth is, is that we're like, just start. It's going to be harder. I don't want to scare anyone, but this year is going to be harder. Like Joe, you haven't run for two years. Like this is going to be, this next summer is going to be one of the hardest things that you've done. You know, not only that, I'm, I have no one experienced in the role, there right? I don't have a camp director. I have me, uh, oy, oy, oy. which and could be challenging. About, and you talk about people aging out, like people aging up. Like we spoke mm. earlier about like role modeling. We have this big role modeling thing that happens right. at Camp Highlight, but now suddenly our juniors became seniors and they just didn't have the training. They weren't prepared to role model for the rookies. And the whole system just kind of like began to crumble in. And that's just one year off. Everyone was suddenly two years older. Um, I'm off track. I want to get back to my original point, which is just start a little earlier. This is going to be a harder summer. You're listening to this right now in December or whenever it is that this airs. Um, Just start, start something, Grab Mm -hmm. grab a clipboard, jot down some ideas, like start. And if you were to start something now, Chris, what's, what's something that you usually tend to start, let's just say after the winter holidays, what's, Great. what's something that you would like to Great start Great question. Earlier? I mean, we already went on for an hour about staffing, so I'm going to move that to the side. Um, schedule and activity review. That's something that okay. we tend to wait until later. And we tell ourselves, well, we have to have the staff in place first. So let's do it in the spring. Mm. But honestly, just coming off of a family camp that we did, like we had a huge staff meeting. And we went through every single thing on the schedule. Did it work? Did it not work? What, and I, I already updated the schedule for next year. It right. took me two or three hours. It's done though. And, you know, could I have done it? Can I do it next April? I can, but I, it's done. And I, I feel better. It clears the way to do all the other hard stuff that's coming. Yeah. And some of us need, some of us in, not, maybe not in this room, but perhaps also in this room need, um, you know, that incentive of that emergency feeling to get things going. And, you know, there's tricks to, to, you know, plan meetings with people and you have to present this information. So it's, you're not just relying on your own calendar, but whoever scares you a little bit, make sure you plan the meeting with that person. So you have to present. Um, I think, I think with, with starting early and, and on that theme, it's also setting realistic expectations for what your summer might look like. And that, you know, whether you ran for the past two summers or not, I think there still is a, 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 a knowledge gap. There's an experiential gap that, that has occurred. Um, and, and so what you can expect from perhaps leadership team members or staff members or even your campers are maybe that what we're aiming for is, is very much what good enough is and, and labeling and being explicit about what good enough looks like and what you're okay with so that you're not in a state of I know what this place can be and we're not there right now well that's the reality so what does good enough look like to you and what's going to make you feel successful so that we're not looking at this as as a miss but as a or it's a building block 
I think that that's, that's huge, right? The knowledge gap and, and what is good enough, right? The fact that we're not trying to, I think it'd be a, a misguided mindset to try and be better than the summer of 2019. Right. I think that your goal should be, okay, start again, right? We took, we took so many steps forward and then the pandemic happened and we literally just slid back because we don't know where we are. We don't know where we are. We don't know how many campers are going to come. But the idea of good enough and, and one of the things I'm focusing on, knowing that I'm going into an entirely new staffing structure for my full-time staff and my camp staff is going to look different because of the new staffing structure, this idea of um, finding people who need to be at camp because it will give them uh, that feeling of home who are old enough to be a summer camp director as a student position, right? So a university and the United Church of Canada is famous for this uh, or infamous, depends on who you, but like hiring just summer camp directors for four months or five months. And, and that's part of our new staffing structure going forward. So I'll have a full-time director of camping and programs and marketing, but the summer details will be taken care of by a summer camp director. And my goal is to find someone who knows Pierce Williams well to be that person. And I literally mm -hmm. was on LinkedIn yesterday posting the job and, and thought to myself, oh, well, who can I recruit now? Who can I go out to lunch with now to get them on site and on board and, and go from there? There's a lot of moving pieces. Um, as there are every summer, I just think now getting ready for a summer that you don't quite understand, it's going to be a lot more moving pieces. Um, yeah, making a list. I think that's the one thing you can do right now to help yourself is make a list, yeah. right? Because it helps to do things. Um, what, and I'm still surprised 30 years or 25 years into my camping journey that the summer camp sneaks up on me every summer right? Like there's stuff that I'm supposed Somehow. to. Somehow. Oh my like, God. Did you know it's, summer comes right after spring? It's like Surprises the ninja. Every year. It's like the ninja of, of things. Summer camp is like, it, <laughs> but it hides in plain sight. Like you, it's all, I spoke at a church last Sunday and I was like, it's all I think about. I think about camp and it still sneaks up on me. And you're like, you get to June and you're like, oh, I need a brand 200 tree cookies for my camper appreciation <laughs> stuff. Like that's something I could go home right oh, now and do. That's that's the way it goes. By the time we finish this recording, it will be May and we'll be like, what <laughs> happened? <laughs> did you guys, did you guys, what happened you guys? It's just mm. time when, um, one of the thing I just want to throw this in, uh, it, it goes back with my start, uh, early and review your program. I, I always want to say this. I always want to put this out there is that look around at who you're serving and think about who's not there and then why Absolutely. and be really be really thoughtful about that like if if you live in a really diverse community uh or if you live in a community with like a large asian american asian canadian population but none of them come to your camp just ask your just think about that think well, what is what is it is it something you're putting out there is this a, a time to look at your website your materials just think about who's not there who's not and also very important with your leadership team Ask yourself who's not at that table. Look at your staff, look at your leadership mm -hmm. team and ask yourself who's not at that table. And I think that, that that's such a nice tie into the comfort piece. Um, because if, if, you're, if you're making things comfortable for a specific group of individuals, it's a very high chance that you might be also alienating um, individuals that will 100% benefit your, benefit your organization and they'll benefit hopefully from you as well. Um, but there's a, there's a comfort piece that is lacking when we're, when we, when we don't have different people at, at our camp. And it goes to the idea that, you know, my always is different than your always. My comfort is different than your comfort. Exactly. And, and this is where, as the executive director of a camp and retreat facility, this is where we wonder about retreats returning as well. And those groups tend to be the um, the more diverse groups that use Pierce Williams as opposed to our campers. Um, but are those populations going to come back um, and use mm -hmm. us? And are they going to live in that community as well? Um, yeah, it's summer is 
it seems so far away right now, but it's so, there's so much to do. But Mm -hmm. as with anything, we can often build it up in our minds that there's so much to do without actually ever writing it down and seeing that there's just all these small steps we take, right? You, you don't climb a mountain by jumping up, right? You just, you take one step at a time. And that's the, that's the key is that I, I think that for me, especially after two years of not running camp and not having a camp director hired and having a very, you know, going through organizational change, um, it can seem like you're in, <laughs> I was watching a documentary, it can seem like you're in, you know, the, the mountains in Nepal and every peak needs to be climbed. You're just like, I need to get there and I need to get there and I need to get there and I need to get there. And I think in essence, it's a reminder that that's not what you're doing. What you're doing is just focusing on one thing and one thing alone. And that is to make sure that camp 2022 happens successfully, safely, and is a building block to the future from there. Did uh, either of you have anything else you wanted to add to the topic of how to make sure that next summer is more survivable, palatable? uh, Survivable. Survivable. (laughs) I hope that everyone survives. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wear a helmet all summer just to protect myself. (laughs) I think we hit on some really great things. Mm-hmm. I think this is a rock star episode. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm going to say that out loud to you, listener. Yeah, I think I, this is a rock star episode. Good one. <laughs> and t- take it seriously. I think, um, I mean, just in conclusion, I think that, um, you know, listen, let's be honest. We have this conversation with ourselves every year, right? It doesn't have to be a worldwide pandemic for us to be like, well, what can we do to make next year more successful? Right. We make a list. You know, the other thing you can do to make next year more successful is like really follow through. <laughs> really follow through and sit yourself down and ask yourself why you can't start earlier because uh, I'm going to suspect that you can and whatever barriers that are exist, whether or not you can overcome them, you need to know that they are there because it's probably not just impeding you here. It's probably impeding you in other places in your life. That's as, that's a social work as I'm going to get today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's a lot of pressure that we put on ourselves as camp directors to do all of the things um, and know all of the things. And I hope that in this podcast, you know, you, you can pick out some of the things that speak to you and other things that don't, then we can leave them on the side. But the, the truth is, is having a little time to reflect on what you need to do and how you can get it done. And that's not going to be exactly perfect. Um, and letting that go is also going to hopefully help your summer feel like a successful one. Yeah. What is good enough? Mm-hmm, and what's good enough? And I don't want to underplay, and I want to make sure that anyone who's listening hears this. I don't want to underplay how doing something small can mean something big, right? Yeah. So I was saying just before the episode, um, if you're watching on YouTube, you get to see this, but I'm putting up new signs for our cabin numbers. Mm. Um because we painted in, we painted, during the pandemic, we painted cabins and took them down. And I think the, the other ones are crap because they're a graphic design I did in 2008. And so, but it's a small things, right? It's small things around camp that people may or may not notice. And, and don't be, don't forget that it doesn't all have to be large. You can, you can take those small things as well. So, excellent. I believe now it is time for our tool of the week. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Mm. All right. My tool of the week this week, I'm going to go first. My tool of the week is a, um, a speaker. It's for your, it's a Jabra 510 wireless speaker. It can be wireless or it can be plugged in. Um, it is a conference speaker. I'm holding it up on, on the video. It's a conference speaker so that it can be in the center of the room and, and hear everybody and be the microphone for everybody, but also be the speaker for everybody. Um, and so um, we had purchased this prior to the pandemic as, as camp so that when we did board meetings, we could invite people from farther away to be at our board meeting. So we have the Zoom, we have the camera for the Zoom meeting, and then we have this sitting in the middle of the, the table. It is wireless as well, where you can connect it with Bluetooth. And so on your phone, 
it's brilliant if you if you want to set that up. But it is uh, it's not inexpensive. I think around 140, 150 bucks Canadian. I don't know what that uh, in America. I think that's 10 bucks. Um, and uh, but it is a Jabra 510 wireless speaker. Gab, what is your tool of the week? My tool of the week is um, five different Instagram um, feeds that you can follow that are part of the camp community that I think are doing brilliant, brilliant work and are pushing our industry forward. So for me, Pride Camping, check them out. Uh, the Summer Camp Society, S'more Melanin, Oars, and transplanting. All these individuals, all these people that are working to make our industry uh, more accessible, more inclusive, um, talk about equity, diversity. This to me is, is, you know, I'm constantly looking for information to educate myself, but the fact that this is all camp specific is such a gift. And um, I am a better camp director because of all of these, um, all of these uh, Instagram themes and associations. So I want to say thank you to them and please do follow them. Awesome. I, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to make a right turn. So do you watch TV? Uh, <laughs> if you're anything like me, you do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I watch, end up watching a lot of TV um, since DVRs have become a thing of the past, at least for me. Sometimes I, I lose track of where I am and like the multiple storylines that I am um, tracking. And so I recently got this app called TV Time and it's definitely for Android, it's probably for iPhone. And it's just a way, it's quite simple. It's just, you tell the app what shows you're watching and it will just let you know when they're on. You know, uh, you ask me what any, what any shows I watch, what night they're on. I have no earthly idea. I only know when the app tells me like, oh, you have an episode of Great British Bake Off to watch. I'm like, oh, no way. Um, you can check it off, like check off which ones you've watched. Uh, it will make recommendations for other shows you might want to watch. But the best part is that like for every episode, you can like leave comments and comment about like what you thought about what happened on the episode. And unlike, you know, the other cesspools of the internet where everyone just hates everything all the time because that's really fashionable somewhat some, for some reason, people tend to really enjoy the shows that they watch on TV time. And 90%, 99% of the comments are really positive. And oh, it's nice. just, I know, I, oh my God, could you imagine how novel that must be? That's to lovely. be on a conversation online and people are generally positive. Mm. How did we get here? The point is, uh, check it out. Like I said, I get a, I, I watch a lot of my shows on the internet. I don't know when they're on and I forget where I'm at. If you're anything like that, then check out TV time. Also, it's a pretty app. I find it really pretty and clean. There we go. Yep. That sounds awesome. I just wait until they're recorded on the DVR and and then we can watch you still have there. a dvr see i don't oh. i haven't had a dvr in like i have two of them and 15 and, years and they uh it's it's yeah it is what it uh -huh. is we live in the country so you can't have great internet uh, oh but, i see yes but uh that is it thank you so much uh to coming out and helping with this podcast uh gabs if people want to find out or reach out to you how can they do that they can see where I work at waro.com. Uh, contact me at info at waro.com, O-U-A-R-E-A-U. Or they can follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Rail and Rail takes two L's. Thank you. Chris? You can check out what I'm doing with my life by going to Instagram at Camp Highlight or www.camphighlight.com. If you want to slide into my DMs, check it out at Planet Chris one, the number one. Awesome. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions or want to reach out to me, the best way to do that is over email joe at yo yo joe.com or joe at camp is better.com. Both of them work. Um, and uh, we will go from there. Um, but that is our episode for this week. Thanks so much, friends. And we'll see you again in a couple of weeks.